most of the scientists who say they're not convinced are not professional climate scientists who for various reasons, in some cases political, in others psychological, say that they are not convinced by the mainstream climate science. If you look at professional climate scientists, 99.999% are convinced that human activity is changing the climate. What most professional climate scientists are now saying is that we should take a risk management approach. As a result of human activity in the last 200 years, the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is now 385 parts per million. Melting of the Arctic ice is a symptom of the Arctic getting warmer. The fact that there is a consensus of scientific opinion that the Earth is getting warmer is no longer news. The Earth is not cooling, the Earth is warm. So if we're going to have a sustainable society, we will need to have stabilised our population and stabilised our consumption per person. Then we're going to have to reduce by about 60% our per capita consumption to get back in balance. Climate sceptics, if you had um, a sentence or two to say to them, how, how might you persuade them that they're wrong? Well, unfortunately, the skeptics come in different camps. I mean, the ones who make scientific arguments are very few. You know, are they saying that there's negative feedback effects that have to do with clouds that offset things? There are very, very few things that they can even say, you know, there's a chance in a million of those things. The main problem you have here, it's kind of like AIDS. You make the mistake now and you pay for it a lot later. And so when you have all sorts of urgent problems, the idea of taking pain now that has to do with the gain later and a somewhat uncertain uh, pain thing. In fact, the IPCC report, you know, that, that's not necessarily the worst case. And there are people in the rich world who look at IPCC and say, okay, you know, that, that isn't that big a deal. The fact is it's the, that uncertain part that should move us towards this. But my dream here is that if you can make it economic, and meet the CO2 constraint, then the skeptics say, okay, I don't care that it doesn't put out CO2. I kind of wish it did put out CO2, but I guess I'll accept it because it's cheaper right, than right, right. what's come before. <laughs>
Well, the, the EU has decided not to go too deeply into uh, carbon reduction simply because they can't afford it. We've had the Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has now said the whole global warming scare has been oversold. So it's not happening in, going to happen in the US this year or probably it'll lose momentum and it'll just die. And on top of that, we're going to have a cooling trend which can make most people wake up to the fact that global warming isn't happening. And we'll, the benefit of that is be the next generation is going to be extremely cynical about this sort of thing. Sure. July last year, these six states, particular states in the northeastern US, had their coldest July for 115 years. In fact, the peak US temperature was 1934, and despite 70 years of carbon dioxide additions to the atmosphere, that record hasn't been beat. Your opinion on uh, geoengineering, um, in consideration obviously for now, since we have cloud seeding technology and right up to uh, the current heart technology, which is heating up the ionosphere, which must be messing with some of these readings to some degree, but your, your opinion on geoengineering? Uh, it's idiotic and a waste of money. Right. It's, uh, and then polluting. Sure. Some of it uh, involved in inserting sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. Yes. They're yes. just mind-bogglingly stupid. Sure, sure. And this is obviously a byproduct of the fear factor involved with the global warming scare and those sort of um, tactics. Well, closer to home, our own government's going to waste about a billion dollars on carbon sequestration. And what it gets me about that whole carbon sequestration thing is it's going to burn through our coal reserve twice as fast. Yeah, yeah. So people who go on about sustainability are actually quite happy to destroy our natural resource and halve the life of it. It's just bizarre. Now we're told that global warming, increasing global temperature, will cause less snow and ice cover. Now if that's true, the opposite is also true. That if we have more snow cover, the world is cooling. Well, this is 43 years of Northern Hemisphere average snow cover for the Northern winter. And last year they had a record high for the first 43 years. So the snow cover is telling us that the world is cooling. Is there an organisation out there that, is, that you consider to be truly independent? It's the Polish Academy of Sciences and the Russian Academy of Sciences are probably the only ones. Wow. Well, global governments would be very bad for us. Um, the UN's a very poorly run country, and if that's an example of golden governance, we're just going to continue to go backwards. I plotted this graph up from data downloaded from the Bureau of Meteorology website. And this is 100 years of Perth data. The first 60 years of that record is flat. They had one year of warming in 1976 at the Great Pacific Climate Shift. The last four decades have also been flat. On the East Coast, we can actually find records that were much warmer in the 19th century than they are at the moment. Well, this graph shows the longest thermometer record on the planet. It is the Central England temperature record from 1661. And the interesting thing about this graph, it shows the rise out of the coldest decade of the morning of minimum, 1690 to 1700, up to 1741, and that's 2.2 degrees centigrade in 40 years. That's a temperature rise three times as great and more than twice as fast as the purported 0.7 degree rise of the 20th century. If we go back a thousand years, it was actually two degrees warmer in northern Europe than it is at the moment. Greenland a thousand years ago was one degree warmer than it is today. If we go back four and a half thousand years, it's warmer again. The peak temperature of the Holocene was six to eight thousand years ago in this period. And it's been cooling by 0.25 degrees centigrade per thousand years since. We have these interglacials every 100 to 120,000 years. So if the Holocene ends anything like the Eemian, we'll have another 3,000 years of little ice age-like conditions before we plunge into the next glaciation. Peak 